So, sup, it's Chuckle Fox. It's your boy, Dark Raku, here with What If Issei Could Summon Different Wolves, part uh, one. But yeah. Now, not the point I just thought of this What If like a while ago, but yeah, while I was doing my Naruto What If in my first channel, and also those collab What Ifs with most of the other guys. So yeah, if you want to go check it out, there's my first channel name, Lord Potato, but yeah. Other than that, uh, let me begin this. What if? Let me shut the fuck up. I haven't really uploaded on my second channel since I've been kind of trying to grind on my uh, first channel, but yeah. But who really cares? Uh, let me just begin this. What if? Let me shut the fuck up and let me begin. So, we begin into mostly a kind of uh, brownish hair kid who kind of just lost his friend because they actually had it to move to Europe. So, of course, this worked well. He is quite sad. He went to the park to clear his mind, but he couldn't really clear his mind. Instead of clearing his mind, what he met, what he met at the park was mostly well, no one. He was kind of sad, and he wished he had a friend. He wished he kind of had like someone to help him out. Until this is where a small wolf actually appears right in front of him. This small wolf had kind of goldenish fur, and of course, where well, he kind of had like this whitish, very very silky white skin, or not skin, mostly fur. This is where he got kind of these goldenish eyes. And this is where, well, kind of like goldenish at the same time, looking kind of brownish a little bit, but not much. This is where, well, he actually appeared right in front of mostly Issei. And it's literally a little puppy. Just a little puppy wolf. Puppa wolf. This is where, well, mostly Issei saw this and was confused. He kind of got scared until the little wolf licked him. This is where, well, this little boy kind of just got happy and right now smiles at the little baby wolf. This is where, well, he decides to pat him and decides to, like, stroke his kind of hair, mostly his head. This is where, well, the wolf is quite literally fluffy. It's literally a furball. This is where, well, mostly the brown hair kid right now just becomes really entranced in the little wolf. Literally kind of hugging it and, of course, being happy. Kind of just for forgot about the whole thing of, like, his friend kind of moving to Europe and, of course, just never ever going to see them again. This is where, well... Just kind of got in trance with the little wolf. The little wolf is actually helping him in his emotions. But this is where something else happens. A giant grotesque monster actually appears when mostly Issei had to go home. Because he couldn't really bring pets. So of course he told the wolf that he needs to go home. But when Issei was actually about to get out of the park. He turned around to see the wolf and the wolf wasn't there no more. He was confused but he didn't think that so. maybe the wolf had to go back to his parents. But this is where, well... Before anything can happen, this is where, well, mostly, the kid was actually going to leave the park, but this is where, well, a kind of being actually appeared right in front of him. It was a stray kind of devil. This was a stray devil was all grotesque and freaky thing. This is where the kid got scared and, of course, tried to run away, but this is where, well, the monster heard the screams of the kid and right now just turned around and tried to kill him. This is where, well, he managed to pierce, well, mostly using one of his fingers that was literally long as shit. Right now, to pierce mostly the brown haired kid's stomach, but the kid managed to still manage to get away, even if there's a lot of blood kind of falling from him. This is where, well, he managed to get into the forest while the stray devil was chasing him. And this is where he said, Come out, come out, you little kid. I know you want to die sooner. Why don't you just let me kill you right here? He sniffed the air and found the kid's location. But when he gets towards the location, he finds the kid right now, well, laying down. You would think he'd be laying down on a tree already dead, but no. The kid's hole is right now gone, and he seems to be asleep. But this is where the one thing that the stray devil kind of, like, found out is the thing that he's laying on is a wolf, and a big-ass wolf. The wolf kind of looks like this. Pretty much it looks like this, this kind of situation. The wolf right now looks up with his bluish crystallized eyes, and right now has, like, this kind of, like, wings with, like, this kind of, like, very wind aura, like he has a, like an aura, like a magic aura of wind, but yeah. But this is where, well, before mostly the straight devil can even understand what the hell this thing is, he still sees the devil human, but the de well, not devil human, mostly the human who's clearly asleep. But this is where, well, he's confused because there's also a small golden wolf next to him, cuddling with him, but yeah. This is where, well, mostly the straight devil says, What the? What are these things? Ah, oh, whatever. This is where he rushes at Mosi the child. And of course, the wolf right now, right narrow his eyes, growls in an instant. And this pressure of power right now smashes into the straight devil. This devil right now freezes because, well, he can't move any further. This pressure of power is right now smashing upon him. 
before he can even understand what this thing is or what is exactly happening, something else appears behind. Well, mostly, well, the straight devil. He turns around to see this right now kind of crackling lightning kind of wolf. This where it looked like a wolf because it had a long tail. Right now, its fur itself was kind of crackling with lightning. And this thing was none other than, well, a being, a mythical legend being that can only be called as, well, as known as Raiju. Raiju looks down and growls and says, why are you there to attack the master? This where, well, well, not attack the master. Why did you attack him? This where, well, the straight that was like, what the, I, aren't you supposed to be with the, this where, well, before anything happens, this is where Raiju claws down and takes out the stray devil in one clutch, one shot at him entirely. This where, well, Raiju looks back at the wind wolf and, of course, looking back at, well, the small brown haired boy named Issei and also the small wolf. This where, well, we'll see Raiju then disappears in an instant. Right now, appears, but then disappears after mostly defending, well, since considered a new master, but yeah. Does it work well? Well, Issei is asleep and mostly kind of was a little bit cold, but this work well. The cold air decided to disappear. Of course, he feels back to normal and feels mostly back to sleep, but yeah. The wolf that was actually with him, mostly the bigger wolf, is called a wind wolf. This wind wolf is actually able to kind of get rid of any air that is not needed. At the same time, control air, manipulate it. Even getting rid of cold air and making it warm, but yeah. This it work well. The wind wolf right now put his like own tail on top of mostly boats, the brown haired boy and the small little wolf. But yeah, this is what. Well, the wolf kind of says, "Go to sleep, little prince. Go to sleep." This is what. Well, the next day woke up. Well, mostly the next day actually appears the sun. This is where it smashes into Issei's face, and this is where Issei is confused. Huh? What? Uh, what happened? This is where. Well, mostly Issei kind of opens his eyes slowly to see the little small wolf kind of next to him and this where Issei hugs himself because he's actually so fluffy but this where well someone says oh you're awake this where well right now Issei looks around thinking that someone actually saw him with uh, with the wolf and thinking that they're gonna try to hurt the wolf and this where well Issei says I'm not gonna let you hurt him this where well ha <laughs> this is where he heard a chuckle this where well he kind of turns around to see a giant wolf Issei wanted to scream while mostly well well not really scream this is where, well, he was like, huh? A wolf? You're pretty big. And fluffy. This is where, well, Issei hugs him in an instant. He didn't really scream. He just hugs the big fluffy wolf. He's like, oh my gosh, you're so fluffy. This is where, well, mostly the wolf chuckled even more. Kind of started laughing. The smaller wolf woke up and kind of pouted and kind of just be next to Issei. Kind of rubbing his own fur. And this is where, well, Issei strokes him. But yeah, this is where, well... The wolf itself, the bigger one, kind of says, ha, quite interesting. I haven't laughed like that in a long time. Huh. Being such a small kid, you seem to be quite not scared for me. That's where, well, you see, looks at him and says, why would I be scared for puppy or wolf? That's where, well, we'll see the wolf, the other wolf felt insulted, but not much. That's where he chuckles and says, ha, if only you knew what exactly I could do. But whatever. My name is, well... So his name says, my name is Fujin. And this is where, well, Issei says, Fujin? Isn't that the god of wind? This is where, well, right now, making Issei look confused. Fujin chuckles and says, yes, I am Fujin. Well, yeah, I'm one of Fujin's kind of animals, but you can call me mostly, well... You can call me Fuji, uh, one of Fuji's kind of pets, or mostly one of his like guardians, or you can call me cousin. This where well, Issei says, "Okay, cousin. Um, what to call? Why are you here?" This where well, cousin chuckles and says, "You call me. You call for my help." This where well, mostly Issei says, "I did." This where well, cousin chuckles and sees that mostly the kid has not known about his abilities at all. The kid can actually summon other mostly mythical. Uh, wolf animals, mostly other kind of mythical animals. Well, not mythical animals entirely, but mythical wolves, which there are different types. There's the mostly like different types, like mostly Scalin and Hattie are considered some of them, but yeah, being Finnish children, but yeah. 
Raijin's one of them and other things. And even that one small wolf that Issei kind of is holding on to. And this is where the small wolf is just kind of cutting it around with Issei. This is where we almost see Issei said, But how can I do that? Hmm? No, no, much, kid. Pretty much you just managed to summon me. I don't really know much of the details and how you could. Truly, we only listen to those of the Pacific werewolf kind of clan family. But truly, I don't even know how you managed to summon me. You're just completely normal human. He sniffed mostly Issei and kind of realized one thing. The golden wolf is actually a little bit different, supernatural at least, but not entirely. He decides to ignore it for a while now. And just ignore it until this where Issei said, if I'm human, uh, does that mean like other wolves like mostly Scully Hattie from the Greek mythology of Fenor children are real? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't think you can summon them now. That's where, well, EC literally tries and there's two wolves that literally appear right in front of him. One where kind of a orangey reddish color and the other one kind of being a bluish whitish color. This where, well, one of their eyes, well, both of their eyes from each other, one had red, one had blue. This is where there were small puppies and they were like confused. They look at mostly Issei and Issei looks at them and says, so cute. This is where he hugs both of them and this is where, well, he's kind of scratching both of them. And they go, Arr. but yeah, this is where, well, mostly Kazu kind of was shocked to see mostly Issei manages to summon out Hattie and Scully. He doesn't know how Fenor is going to feel about this, but whatever. This is where, well, mostly both of the wolves are so cute for Issei and Issei said, I'm going to keep all three of you and you. This is where Kazu says, uh, I don't think I'm going to fit in your house, kid. Uh, you're right. Maybe I should, uh, how would I be able to bring you back? Huh? Oh, you can just summon me. You can call out my name. <sighs> Truly, it's not that hard. You can just call out my name and think in your head and what you want to summon. You can literally summon out Hattie and Scully through that. Or mostly just think in your head, which is quite advanced. But, not the point. Are you really going to skip, uh, sk like, keep, uh, Hattie and Scully with you? This is where, well, you just said, but they're so cute. I just want to keep them. This is where well, mostly Kazu says you do realize they have already their own parent. This is where well, mostly Issei pouts and say, "But wolfful." This is where well, mostly Issei is just kind of acting like a child. This is where well because he is a child. And this is where well, mostly Kazu chuckles and says, "Come on, kid. Just let them go back to their parents." This is where both the wolf are confused. Of course, this is where they see the huge wolf and just get reminded of their kind of like father. But yeah. I think friend was a guy. I can't remember. I think he was, yeah. But this is where, well, mostly that was the thing. And this is where, well, mostly he says, fine. This is where, well, he kind of put them back into, well, they both dispel after a while. But yeah, turned into mostly shadow somewhat, but not the point. One turned into shadows, one turned into kind of light. But yeah, this is where, well, he was confused. He said, why couldn't I keep them? Kid, you need to calm down. Okay, well, I have to also be going. The wolf stands up, and that's where he turns into wind and says, Until next time, kid. That's where, well, he says, Wait, what about me getting back home? Where the? How late? How did I get here? This is where he's still holding on to the small wolf. The small wolf right now yawns, and this is where, well, right now, Issa says, So cute. This is where, well, we'll see Issa goes inside, and Issa says, Mom, Dad, I'm back. This is where, well, we'll see. He sees his parents right now being frantic as hell and says, Where were you? <gasps> what is that? This is where, well, the small wolf yawns and just goes, yeah. And this is where, well, mostly he says, this is my friend, and I'm going to call him Goldie. This is where, well, we'll see. <clears throat> Both of the parents can see Issei smile so brightly, so cheerful. It's been a while since I've seen that kind of smile and uh, cheerful look. That kiddish kind of look instead of the depressing looking one. Mostly since, well, Irina left, but yeah. And Issei does not know Irene is a girl in this one, but yeah, because he still thinks it's a dude because of the tomboy kind of actish, but yeah. This is where well, mostly Issei said, We, let's go, Goldie. We're going to go. Follow the seat. I'm tired. This is where, well, mostly, yes, Issei managed to take all the information pretty well, but he's still tired and still is a kid, but yeah. This is where, well, the wolf yawns, and this is where, well, mostly Issei kind of walks upstairs, but yeah. This is where, well, both of the parents just look at each other, happy to know that their child's back, and seeing the wolf is back, or with them. Seeing that a new family member has actually joined them entirely. This is where, well, surprisingly, but yeah, it's not grandkids, but an actual wolf. Yeah. 
But of course, with Issei's new companion, we go into a literally time skip about mostly Issei was around mostly eight around there. So we go into mostly a nine year time skip. This is where, well, mostly Issei has gotten older and is now going to school. This is where, well, mostly Issei yawns and says, ah, damn it, school. Why can't I bring Goldie with me? This is where, well, he's yawning and really wanting to bring mostly his wolf. But, of course, it's another day of school, of pain and having to be, uh, well, pervert at the same time, yeah. He truly doesn't actually like being perverted at all, but if it keeps the girls away from him, then it'll be good. Because he sees the girls as literally a nuisance and a bother half the time. So the only way to get them away from him is either to try to ignore them, but that doesn't work because he has read Naruto before he read mostly manga and anime and other things. He read mostly how Sasuke acts like an emo bastard and yet the girl still after him he's like nope i don't want that he then realized that the perverts usually get the girls away from them which is good in his opinion he doesn't like any girls to kind of go anywhere near him because they're kind of annoying well in this school they're kind of annoying he met other girls who are actually decent and actually mostly women who's actually more mature as hell but girls in this school are like fucking rare as hell to even meet that but yeah when he's in public, he's not a pervert, but when he's in school, he has to be a pervert to get the girls away from him. Because they are annoying, nuisance as hell. But yeah. This is where, well, mostly Issei is also friends with two perverted idiots. He calls them the two perverted idiots because these two guys are the worst people to be around with. Mostly, luckily, he hasn't went insane because luckily the Goldie or mostly his other wolves. But mostly, he is... Close to just snapping and killing both of them. The reason why he hasn't killed both of them was because, well, they have such a good reputation of being the worst people ever. L literally terrible. Other than that, if they didn't have a reputation like that, he would never be friends with them. He would not care. He only ha he only uses both of them to get away from girls because clearly he doesn't like having horny girls after him. But yeah, but this way, well, we'll see with that happening. We go into most of your time of him getting to school. He yawns, walk inside, see Sona Sufri, or mostly Sona Shatora, which at the first time, well, mostly he only knows her about Sona Shatora, not Sona Sufri or any of that. He doesn't even know he's, she's a dub boy at all. He doesn't care. He just walks in, kind of gets to class. Of course, the word, well, before getting to class, Sona says, you're late again, you know. How, when are you going to actually take this serious and actually get here early? You still wanted to really reply saying, Well, bitch, do you not realize that I live far fucking away? Oh, no. How about you fucking let me switch to another school? Which, this is the problem. This school literally was supposedly the closest thing to his own school. Well, mostly another school. But another school was actually closer. They found out how close it was from Kuwa and to another school. This is where, well, mostly Kuwa was about like 50, uh, mostly 50 meters away. While mostly this other school was literally 35. Like, bruh. Like, Issei could have fucking take the train to it. He can't take the train to over here because literally there's no train track to over here. So this is where Issei really wants to snap at this bitch and say, bitch. Do you not realize how close my old, well, mostly my own original school, because yes, he actually was a part of the school before. He was way too smart and way too calculating to switch him to this school, which it was a fucking confusing matter, but man, he was like, he wanted to just snap. This is where, well, Sona noticed most of the frustration in Issei's eyes, and this is where, well, she decided to ignore it for now, because it clearly seems that uh, the Hyoto kid is actually, well, having some problems. Either she makes it worse, or she's probably going to have an explosive tick bomb going all around school, getting worse if she doesn't make it worse. This is where, well, she decides to make her kind of sass comments to herself, and this is where, well, kind of just letting the brownish hair kid kind of go on. But yeah, we go on to mostly a time skip of mostly, well, uh, Issei getting into his class. Talking to his two friends, actually never wanted to talk to them again. He's thinking in his head, God, shoot me in the head and murder me. This is where, well, Issei thinks in his head. This is where he then says, yeah, I seen that, blah, 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 with his other friends, like, whatever. He's like, fucking kill me. This is where Issei in his head is just thinking just to die at this point. 
That's what he's like. I just want to meet. I just want to see Goldo, Goldie, or even Hattie or Scully. Why are they so mean and not coming with me? Damn it. Mom, Dad are so mean. This is where well, Mosey is just thinking he would love to see Mosey Hattie rush towards Mosey, the two perverted friends, and even any girl who dares to try to touch him. Because Mosey, he found out one thing. Hattie is quite literally overprotective. And Hattie is the kind of, well, reddish one. Mostly the one who actually will try to eat the moon in Ragnarok. Mostly the stories of Ragnarok, but yeah. But of course, he really wished that he could bring Hattie. Because Hattie does not like anyone. And it doesn't matter who the hell you are. It will literally attack you in an inch and try to bite you. And you see here, his bites are quite ferocious. But when he adds magic to it, your skin is literally feeling like it's burning. He got mostly one of his uh, bites from mostly, or not bites. He is a God Slayer killer, so of course, his bites are literally deadly as hell. And also can burn you, but yeah, since he's been trying to chase after the sun to eat it, but yeah. This is where, well, Scully, on the other hand, is quite mostly a quiet, kind of lazy, a little bit wolf that really doesn't like attacking too many people. But yeah, Heidi does not care. He's a menace. Which, EC loves the little wolf, which... They're not little no more, they're mostly now older, but this is where he doesn't care if he still will hug them because they're so small and tiny for him. This is where, well, mostly Issei is just dreaming about his wolf until this is where a girl smashes into his desk and says, Hey, pervert. Huh? Issei looks up to see, well, we'll see his senpai. Uh, this is where, well, mostly Issei was just shocked to see his senpai. His senpai is this girl, and we'll see, well. So pretty much, it's a third year, her name Her name is Deiroji, and she's actually a delinquent, but yeah. This is where both Morohama and Masuda are just seeping with anger because, well, this third year is actually talking to Issei. This is where, well, she says, hey, meet me out in the back. This is where, well, Masuda is right now kind of, or not Masuda, Mosi Morohama is right now trying to measure her opai size before he can do clocks. He is knocked out for the count. Matsuda kind of took a, a quick glance, but of course she got also knocked out. This is where Dungeon knows that Issei isn't a pervert, but clearly she knows that Issei isn't looking entirely towards her opai, just mostly towards her eyes. Right now, trying to calculate and see what exactly she wants, and she knows about this. She just doesn't say anything. And this is where, well, mostly Issei is kind of looking nervous, but he's acting. This is where, well, Issei does not exactly know why the sturdier is asking him even to go towards the back. If anything happens, he might have to summon out one of his, well, guardians to actually defeat her. Because clearly he doesn't think he's actually going to win in mostly physical strength. I mean, he could, he can try, because he has been with mostly his friends. His old friends and mostly his own school uh, was a bunch of friends who were delinquents and usually didn't care too much about fighting and other things. So pretty much, he learned a lot of things about actually fighting to hand-to-hand -hand combat in the streets or even just in like general fights. But yeah, so of course he's pretty good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is where, well, he's a little confused in why this girl even wants him to talk to her. He doesn't really understand the third year at all delinquents. Ugh, this is where he falls down, having a headache, but yeah. But of course we go into mostly a time skip from mostly the class towards mostly the end of the class. This is where, well, a bunch of girls were making rumors that Issei is going to get his ass kicked and blah, 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 blah. People think that he's going to die. Blah, 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 blah. But this is where, well, while Issei was walking, he noticed the principal, well, mostly the council room kind of open. And thinking this Sona probably hearing about the rumors. But who it actually is, is a guy with kind of like blackish hair. And blondish hair at the same time. He has an earring and mostly his side that looks like a, somewhat like a, we'll see. So he has this little kind of like mostly earring that looks like a patar earring, but in mostly in his like left side, which mostly his left side eye is being covered up. His right side eye is like this yellowish golden color. This is where, well, or mostly just this yellow color. This is where, well, he has a tiger tattoo on the side of him, but this is where, well, he looks like he got his like mostly, he's wearing like the school uniform of Kuo, and this is where, well, he has his kind of mostly uh, classes. This is where, well, mostly he says, says Kazutora? This is where, well, mostly Kazutora turns around and sees Issei and says, Ay, Issei. This is where he dabs up Issei and says, What's good, my brother? From another mother. This is where, well, Issei starts up and says, Kazutora, what are you doing here? You, you, you really, what? What am I doing here? I'm here to save you. This is where, well, Issei says, I'm not a fucking prince in distress, you jackass. I know. 
But you don't like dealing with horny girls here. Oh, that's right. He says I had a way to get where, uh, get rid of them. How's that? Acting like a fucking pervert. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you just bring Scully with you and just try to bite the shit of them? I would, but my parents stopped me in an instant from bringing Hattie. They said no Scully and no goalie. And I was sad. I'm so fucking sad. Well, that's the case because everyone in our old school really kind of hated those wolves. But at the same time, what are we going to do with Hattie when Hattie was old ruthless and tried to bite us? Well, that is true. Eh, whatever. And besides, they can easily take a punch and this is where Hattie would still kind of scratch at us and beat the shit of us. Which was interesting, but yeah. I guess in this school, they have rules. I, uh, bro, not going to lie. I've been looking for a rule and a loop to kind of get around that, but whatever. Hey, just say that you're disabled. Wait a minute. This is where, well, EC looks at Kazutora with mostly a look of, holy fuck, you had a good ass idea for once in your life. This is where Kazutora goes and look at him and says, fuck you. This is where well, mostly EC chuckles and says, nah, I'm just kidding. But this is where, well, EC just chuckles and says, so why are you here anyway? Hey, I just came here to kind of see what my good friend is doing. Good friend, my ass, but whatever. Hey, I'm just looking out for you, okay? Okay, whatever, man. But still, I have to go somewhere to like this delinquent girl who's actually trying to fight me, I guess. So why don't you show up with me? Hell yeah, are we going to be fighting? Yeah, we're probably going to get suspended and dancing. Okay, let's go. This is where, well, both of them start just walking. This is where, well, Kazutar is kind of grinning like a psychopath. Well, mostly you see, he's just sweat dropping, but this is where, well, he's calm and collected. This is where girls are kind of like standing in front of Mossy Kazator and saying, Why are you there next to the pervert? You should go with us. This is where Kazator says, Are they trying to flirt with me, hit on me, or what the hell? Easy says, Good luck, Kazator. And this is where Kazator says, Move out of the way, bitch. This is where almost well, scaring the shit out of the girls. And this is where, well, Kazator says, Wait for me. I want to fight the shit out of them. This is where, well, mostly the girls were confused. And hearing how Kazator is quite violent. Yeah, they realize that Mosi Katatora, who is next to Issei, is more violent than actually being a pervert. That's why, well, we go into a time skip of mostly them showing up. Now, they show up to see Mosi Daijin, and this is where, well, she's right next to kind of her kind of friend, who is actually a girl with kind of like the greenish hair, but yeah. So, her name is Tiffany, but yeah, she has kind of greenish hair, like orange kind of highlights and braids, but not the point. This orange kind of hairline, but yeah, and she seems to be kind of crouching down with bubblegum kind of like, well, yeah, blowing, but yeah, she also has a Kindle sword, but yeah. This is where, well, she's right next to Dungeon, and this is where, well, Tiffany is a second year, and this is where, well, they both noticed the two students kind of walking in. <clears throat> and this is where, well, mostly there's other delinquents around, but Kazator didn't just come alone. He came with, like, others. Well, mostly, yes, Issa kind of met them at the fucking entrance, well, mostly out of the exit entrance slash of school. And this is where, well, they were kind of coming in. This is where, well, they noticed Issa and mostly Kazator, and Kazator right now told them up right in front of them to line the fuck up because they're getting right to be having a battle. This is where, well, they uh, all nodded. They're actually from Valhalla, and this is where, well, <clears throat> they all show up right now, kind of not having weapons, but they're ready to kind of fight. They don't know who exactly they're fighting, but they don't care. This is where, well, mostly when all of them, well, mostly Donja noticed Issei showing up, Issei kind of has his kind of like mostly clothing uh, wrist up, but yeah, showing a bit of muscles, but not much. He's actually just putting it up so he doesn't mess up his clothing too much, mostly long sleeves, while mostly Kazutar is the same, and this is where Kazutar is grinning. <clears throat> this is where a group of people behind them actually appear, but yeah. This is where, well, mostly Donja kind of questioned Issei and what, why exactly they brought mostly this group of people towards mostly well over here at this meeting this is where Kazator decides to interrupt mostly Issei before he says anything well clearly you wanted to fight one of my good friends and since I just got enrolled to the school I'm not letting that happen I won't even let you fucking touch a good friend of mine doesn't matter who the fuck you are which fucking gang doesn't matter who exactly you're from. It doesn't even matter if you're a part of mostly uh, the Manjo gang. It won't matter when I kick the shit of you. This is where Romo Sikazator had a psychotic grin. Hanma was also next to Issei. Hanma just says, I'm just here because Kazator dragged my ass here. This is where Romo see Issei starts up and chuckles. This is where Romo uh, Donchin kind of just looks at, well, all kind of three people in front of her. This is where she knows her kind of uh, mostly delinquent kind of girls. 
some of them aren't kind of guys, but this is where, well, they notice a group of Valhalla and they just say, nope, they're all scared. Valhalla is right now in this school making this pretty bad. Danja wasn't expecting EC to be actually a part of Valhalla. This is where, well, Mosi we'll Tiffany kind of notices and says, Ksh. so he needed backup just to fight us. What a prophetic weakling. Kazutora says, hey, bitch, who the hell are you calling a prophetic weakling? This is where, well, Tiffany says, I said you, asshole. Kazutora says, do you want to fucking die? This is where, well, both of them right now in front of each other. This is where, well, mostly Tiffany's angry glare at mostly Kazutora, or mostly her orangey kind of reddish eyes, or mostly, wait. Her kind of exact kind of golden and yellow eyes right in front of Kazutora. And Kazutora says, do you want to fucking die? This is where, well, both of them are glaring at each other. This is where, well, mostly Issei, um, uh, also Hanma, just sweat dropping. This is where, well, Dungeon's also sweat dropping and saying, ah, whatever. I only came here to talk to you. Easy Kyoto alone, but mostly my group of delinquent friends actually came, and also my vice captain. And it seems that your vice captain actually came along. Vice captain, I am no damn f whatever. This is where well, mostly Tiffany tries to swing at him, and this is where well, Kazutora tries to punch at her. But yeah, both of them are just green like psychopaths. But wait, but yeah, but we go into mostly dungeon saying, I'm not really here to fight you, but if you're really here to fight me, then I guess I have to kill all of you. That's where, well, Issei says, if you really just wanted to talk, I guess we can talk privately. That's where, well, Moxi Hama says, is that really even necessary? I mean, I'm grateful for not needing to fight. I'm tired as shit because the Kazutora woke my ass in the morning saying, we're going to go and roll into Kuo one day. What the fuck? Do you not know how tired I am? I haven't even smoked a cigarette. I am so fucking tired. I don't care. All of you get ready to go back home. This is where the kind of well, Hollow members are static. It's kind of walking away. God damn it. This is bullshit. Captain really screwed us over. We just woke up this morning tired as hell also. This is where, well, while Kazutora and we'll see, well, Tiffany are right now fighting each other. This is where, well, they didn't even notice the group of people right now leaving, but yeah. Hama says, just go, hurry up. I'm trying to also roll the score. And whatever. This is where, well, Dungeon right now, her, well, mostly a third year right now, faces off a second year. Julia is not fighting, but mostly talking. While mostly, they kind of did walk away from Tiffany and also Kazutora's right now violent acts. They kind of, well, yeah, mostly we go into Issei and mostly Dungeon. Dungeon kind of say, <clears throat> uh, Issei, Kun. This is where she blushes a little bit. This is where Issei looks at her confusedly and say, uh, do you need something? Uh, yeah, this is where she started putting her fingers together and saying, about, uh, about earlier, why I needed to talk to you is, can I please hold your dogs? This is where, well, mostly she kind of said towards Issei. Issei looks coffee. Duh. Uh, how do you, I kind of saw you walking them one time, even if you had a hood on, I noticed who exactly you were. Pretty easily. This is where, well, mostly Issei say, okay, wait, did you just analyze my body structure just to kind of know who exactly I am? Yes, this is where, well, she then kind of blushes a little. This is where, well, you say, say that is even weirder than fucking, uh, well, no, 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 what a thing of the more weirder than, no, wait, no, Aika's fucking thing is more weirder than anything, whatever. This is where, well, he says, says, really? So you actually notice about my three kind of wolves? Yes, can I please, please let me hold the black one? Hattie, are you crazy? He say right now calls, uh, Dodge kind of crazy. Dungeon kind of has a tick mark and says, I just want to hold him. He looks so fluffy and cuddly. This is where, well, Issei says, do you not even know anything about, well, you don't. Hattie is quite violent to other people. He does not like anyone else and he will try to bite you in an instant. This is where, well, Dungeon says, hmm, can I please hold him at least? I won't try to hurt him, anything. I won't take him at all. Please. This is where, well, she's begging right now, having a uh, mostly large blush on her face and just trying to beg towards Issei. He says, uh, well, about this where, well, mostly they hear this, mostly the fighting, screaming stuff, and decide to turn around the corner just to see mostly Tiffany and mostly Kazutor just making out. This is where, well, mostly Kazutor says, God damn, for being a fucking, well, female tiger, you're quite cute as hell. This is where Tiffany says, shut up and fuck me. This is where, well, mostly that's going on. This is where, well, both Dungeon and even Issei just becomes red after seeing that. They're like, okay, nope. This is where, well, mostly Issei says, sure, I'll let mostly you talk to Hattie, or kind of pet Hattie, if you like. This is where she smiles and says, good. This is where, well, she then kind of kisses him in the forehead and says, that's just a reward. If mostly Hattie kind of likes me, then there would be more than just that. 
That's where she kind of points to her chest. And this is where we'll see you see blush and looks away and say, I'm not a pervert, you really like that. I only act like this so gross, that horny girls like won't see over there and inside that school can leave me alone. Then I just says, oh, I know. Clearly you weren't a pervert. When you actually talk to a normal mature female in the park, I noticed that you weren't actually looking at her opa or anybody or acting like a pervert. You were acting re quite respectful, which I like that about you. You have two different sides. One side for this school to be known as a pervert, and the other uh, side to be kind of known as a gentleman at the same kind of respectful. Well, not too much of a gentleman, because clearly I can see that you had a secret of being a delinquent of your old school. Yeah, and I don't know how I even got moved to the school when clearly I punched a shit out of someone in that same day when I was about to give transfer. <coughs> what? How? How did you get enrolled? Don't just say, okay, I didn't fight every person I saw or punch a shit of them. I was normal, okay? Just shut up already. This is where I almost used to chuckle and say, yeah, normal. Not the point, I'm not even normal myself, but whatever. This is where I almost see you say, should we stop the hell out of them before they actually do something? This is where Don't just says, uh, yeah, this is where, well, mostly both Issei and right now Don't just stop the hell out of both of them. And this is where, well, they both look at mostly Don't and even uh, Issei. Because the Tartar's face becomes a little bit red and looks away. Right now, Tiffany does the same. They look bo uh, both the way at the same direction. This is where, well, mostly making both Issei chuckle and say, Well, I didn't know the psychopath of mostly our old school managed to fall in love with another girl. So, Tiger. Were you going to have baby tigers with her? This is where, oh, Katsutoshi, shut up already. This is where, oh, Tiffany right now kind of blushes. Don't you say, so Tiffany, I didn't know you actually were interested in a boy. Didn't you say mostly that one time? I'm not interested in any guy. It doesn't matter who exactly asked me out. I'm never going to like them. This is where, oh, Tiffany say, shut up already, don't you? This is where I almost see both of them are chuckling. Looking, well, liking teasing their kind of supposed vice captains or just friends. This is where, well, both of them are just red entirely, like 50 shades of red, kind of almost just matching the same hair of a crimson red hair girl, but yeah. But of course, we go into a time scoop of Kazutora and Issei walking around. Kazutora says, fuck off, don't say anything. This is where well, Issei says, I didn't even say anything. I know what you were going to say. What, the, where are you going to live? Because clearly, well, are you going to walk all the way from mostly that 35 minute walk to now becoming a uh, 70 minute walk? This is where, well, Cousin Tori says, I got a hotel. Well, not entirely a hotel. Mostly, uh, one of my friends actually managed to get a hotel. Well, not hotel. A most, well, not a motel. Mostly apartments that I live with. Mostly at uh, Hanma. That we're kind of close to school. How f close? Like 20 minutes? God, I need to live with you guys. Hey, you're not living with us because we know Hattie's going to try to bite me. Well, get a bunk bed. We do. But do you realize that Hattie might bite just, just break the fucking bars? The metal bars himself and then make me fall down and bite me. This is where Elmo sees this. Right, I forget that Heidi does not like you. I don't know why. Scully and Mosi uh, Goldie are so fucking nice, but Heidi just ruthless to me. This is where, well, he says chuckling and is laughing. <laughs> You're right. This is where, well, he said remembers one time that Mosi as a tour did kind of kick the shit out of Issei, and Heidi did not like that. Every time that Mosi uh, Kazutora were after Mosi. Uh, Issei kicking the shit out of Kazutora. Mostly they became kind of friends, but Hattie did not like Kazutora one fucking bit. Kazutora might have been just chilling one day of walking around his old school. And of course, mostly he would be like reading something while like, well, reading something on his phone while kind of eating mostly a sandwich. And Hattie would literally appear trying to bite him. And this is where one time he was literally on the pole of like the flag and other things. He was all the way on top of there, somehow not sliding because he was holding on for dear life. Had he started biting the metal pole and started chipping at metal pieces off of the metal pole until it fall down. This is where right now cause the wine his eyes and realize that fucking had he's crazy to bite him. But yeah. This is where well you see what chuckling laughing is that's so true. I remember that this is where Issei starts laughing and dying at mostly Kazator's pain. Kazator says, Shut up. Fuck you, man. This is where Issei says, No thanks, I don't swing that way. This is where both of them are just walking out of school. But of course the where well a red haired beauty kinda notices and says, Who who is that guy? Which one? Kazutora? This is where well mostly Rhea's nodded. What about the other one? Issei Hiro. 
This is where she explains who exactly Isahiro and Kazutora are. This is where, well, she explains Kazutora's last name being Haimia. This is where, well, she just explains that mostly he's just a new transfer student, just got enrolled. And basically is literally best friends with Isa because clearly they don't like that much things. There seems to be opposites while Isa acts like a pervert, but on this like day, he didn't act like a pervert one bit. And this is where Kazutora was quite violent towards anyone, even girls entirely. This is where, well, Reyes realized that mostly both Issei and Kazutora might have been acting, or mostly Kazutora is quite violent as well. Issei is literally probably just showing his true colors just because his friend is here. This is where Reyes says, we need to keep an eye on him. Send mostly uh, Konako towards both of them. We'll make sure that both of them are dealing with some things that are troublesome. This is where, well, mostly she nodded and kind of just tells Konako to do that, but yeah. But this is where, well, Issei and uh, Kazutora are walking through a bridge, and this is where, well, a girl kind of say, Can you two excuse me? This is where, well, mostly Kazutora says, Yeah, walk past us. This is where, well, she said, No, I'm here to talk to mostly Issei kun. Issei kun, would you like to go on a date with me? Uh, Issei says, The fuck? No. This is where Issei says, I barely even know you. This is where, well, she was shocked. And this is where, well, Kazutora is just like, damn, rejection in the best kind. Because clearly, I have never seen you. Even you're part of our old school. Damn, I can literally take a picture and show it to the whole group. The whole group will analyze it through the whole damn school and realize that you were never there. So who exactly are you? Rainer just, just grits his teeth and says, why you bastards? This is where she activated her kind of wings. And right now, it's enraging, glaring at mostly Ethan Kazutora. Kazutora says, says, God damn, is she from like that it's kind of you, those videos, what's it called? Well, that one video that, what's it called, that motherfucker showed us that one time? He says, they don't remind me of that video. God, I just wanted to delete that off my fucking brain. This is where Kazutora chuckles and says, yeah, I also want to delete it off my brain. But not the point. Should we deal with her? This is where Ethan says, I should. <sighs> Come out, uh, Frosto. Frosto appears, this is where a giant frost wolf. And it's not what's it called, uh, Scully, but this is where, well, Frost was a wolf that actually from the kind of, well, this very, he's from the Arctic. Yeah, he's from the Arctic, but he's actually an ice wolf. And this is where, well, the ice wolf breathes out like this frost breath, uh, breath and kind of just like looks at mostly Rainer. Rainer kind of says, what is that? Wait, that's an ice wolf. Why do you have him here? This is where, well, Frost says, none of your business, girl. He sends a very powerful frost breath from his mouth. Right now, freezes right now, raining her wings, falling down to the ground, and say, uh, damn it. This is where she tries to use the light spirit towards the wolf, and the wolf, basically, the light spirit doesn't affect him. It just bounces off his thick scale, uh, mostly just thick skin and fluffy fur. But yeah, this is where, well, mostly before uh, Frosto was about to just bite on her and kill her, this is where Issei stops uh, him and says, don't worry, I know what to do with her. Huh? You, wait, you do? Issei says, of course. That is, threaten you and ask you for questions and why you were trying to kill me. But for right now, I gotta knock you out. This is where Issei knocks her out entirely. And she was just knocked out for the count. This is where someone was actually seeing this, and it was Konako. She says, what the? This is where, well, Frost smells Konako and says, You can come out, Nekamaru. I already smell you from a mile away. I hate cats. This is where, well, mostly Konako appears and says, What are you? This is where she questioned uh, right now, Issei. Issei looks at her and says, huh? The mascots? This is her cousin towards say, ooh, mascot, I want to beat the shit of it. This is where right now Konako near her eyes, but before anything happens, this is where someone says, yo, guys, what the hell are you guys doing? Also, why is right now Frosto out? This is where a guy right now appears with having kind of blackish ears, blackish tails, and yes, he's none other than, well, a member of mostly Issei's old school. Now, of course, they're showing up just because, well, well, mostly in his a group of friends, but not the point. This is where he has his mind, mostly tails and ears out because he's right now not in public. It's kind of private. He just sees Frost and there was a barrier, but not the point. He kind of might have melted probably a little bit. But this is where, well, mostly he kind of sees Konako and says, What the hell? Why is a uh, half devil, half Nekomaru here? This is where Konako sees the black ears and tails and realizes that this person's a Nekomaru. She needed to escape. This is where she was having a panic attack. This is where, before she could even escape, this is where, well, the person appears with blue flames and says, Gotta knock you out, bitch. Sorry, but I need have, I have questions for mostly a Nekamaru like you and why you're a devil. 
Konako, before she can even do anything, this is where, well, he palm strike her stomach, knocking out mostly sending blue flames and knocking out the piece of the roof piece out of her. She got knocked down and fall down to the ground. This is where, well, mostly they switch off. Of course, the where, well, mostly Rainer switch off with this, but she got knocked down and it's by Issei. Okay, well, we all have things to do, so why don't we go do it? This is where, well, Kazutora just chuckles and says, how are you going to carry her? Frosto? Frosto nodded and just brings her towards the Arctic. Doesn't freeze her, but yeah, you get the point. Just cuddle with her. Just around her so she doesn't freeze. When Issa gets to his room, he would just bring her out of it, but yeah. Issa says, other than that, see y'all. This is where, well, Issa starts walking towards his house. And when he gets to his house, his three favorite uh, wolf was actually up here hugging him. This is where Issa says, so fluffy puppies. He actually wanted to fall asleep, but this is where, well, he realized he had to talk to Rainer. But for right now, I'm going to leave it off here for mostly part one of this what if. Bye, see you, and yeah.